Hi everyone, my name is Cindy and I'm an Australian homeschooler. Today I'll be walking you through Life of Fred. Life of Fred is a maths curriculum written for reluctant maths learners. I think we've all heard from our students at some point or another. When are we going to use this? This is so boring. If you have a child who finds maths a bore and struggles to find real life applications for maths, this series of books will bring maths to life. The philosophy behind this book series is that it uses an integrated story approach to teaching maths and it eliminates the drill and kill component that is a feature of so many traditional maths curriculums. Life of Fred uses a story about Fred, a five-year-old maths genius, and through his daily life, we are introduced to maths concepts. So let's have a look at these books. So this is the first book from the elementary series. There's 10 books in the series and it's recommended for grades one to four. So the first book is Apples and they've all got fun names. So instead of book A to book J, it's Apples to Jelly Beans. Then they have the intermediate series. So I've got the three here and they're recommended for grades four to six. So there's Kidneys, there's Liver, and there's Mineshaft. Then there's the middle book set. So I've got the first one of that set here, which is Fractions. Um, the next one is Decimals and Percents. And then there's three pre-algebra books. And at this level, uh, math is getting a bit more serious. So there's also the option of buying an extra practice book for each level. And they're aptly named Zillions of Practice. After this, there's a high school and college level books. And if you manage to finish them all, uh, that will bring you to a third year college level of maths. So let me show you a little bit from the first book, Apples. So I'll just open up to the contents page. So we've got the chapter names here. And as you can see, the chapters um, are not maths related, but they relate to what's happening in the story. So they've got early in the morning, closer to sunrise, what to do before dawn. And then underneath that, uh, they have a summary of the maths concepts that will be covered. So they've got time, they've got what adds up to seven, they've got some shapes, time, days of the week. Um, and this is in comparison to other curriculums where you might have, you know, chapter one, place value, chapter two, addition, chapter three, addition with regrouping. Um, so this is very story based. So I'll just show you the first chapter. It says, early in the morning, Fred lay in his sleeping bag. It was an early morning and it was still dark outside. Fred took his flashlight and shined it on the clock on the wall. It was five o'clock. If it were summertime, it would be getting light by now, but it was February. It would be dark for another couple of hours. Fred liked to go jogging in the morning, but he knew that if he jogged in the dark, he would trip and fall. He was going to wait two more hours until it was seven o'clock before he went running. Fred did not sleep in a regular bed like most five-year-olds. He did not own a bed. He slept in a sleeping bag. Okay, so just from this first page, you've got an introduction to time, uh, to the months, to the seasons, uh, when it would be light and dark. And this is an American curriculum, uh, so their seasons are the opposite of ours. ours. Um, yeah, February is summertime for us, so it probably would be fine to go for a run at five. Then you've got some more introductory information about his life at Kittens University, where he sleeps. There's a picture of his desk, so he sleeps under the desk in his sleeping bag with his little dog, Kingy. Uh, then you have some more math stuff. Uh, Fred told Kingy, let's wait two hours before we get up. It's five o'clock now, and if we wait until seven o'clock, it will be light outside. Kingy didn't say anything, but Fred knew what Kingy was thinking. Five plus two equals seven. Fred opened a desk drawer and took out some pencils. Kingy counted them. There were seven pencils. Fred had a very smart doll. Fred straightened out the pencils. He asked Kingy, now how many pencils are there? Fred knew that Kingy was giggling since that was such a silly question. If you start with seven pencils and you move them around, you still have seven pencils. Even a doll knows that is true. So we've got five plus two equals seven. And if you move them around and have four and three, it still equals seven. And you move them around again, and you have six and one, that's still seven. And then at the end of each chapter, it's got your turn to play, which is a few questions for the student. 
So here they've got sometimes we write 6 plus 1 is 7, sometimes we use an equal sign, write 6 plus 1 equals 7. How would you write 4 plus 3 is 7 using an equal sign? Then they've got some addition. We know that 4 pencils plus 3 pencils equals 7 pencils. What does 4 trees plus 3 trees equal? We know that 5 plus 2 equals 7. So what does 2 plus 5 equal? And then at the end of each chapter, you have the answers. So you can see from this already the integrated story approach coming into play. The author of these books believes that we cannot compartmentalise subjects. So English should not be taught in isolation from maths. Science cannot be taught in isolation from history and so on. Everything is related and that is how we should learn. So I'll show you another chapter. So later on he goes swimming. He finds a pond near his campus. He swims in a circle. He swims in an ellipse and then he swims in a square. As the clouds blew away, the sun became brighter and brighter and the temperature was going up. And you'll notice the temperature is going up by fives. This is called counting up by fives. If you count to a hundred, it is a lot faster to count by fives than to count by ones. Then it's got some fun story element, uh, talking about the ducks coming to the pond. It's got some information about geography some fun information about fish, and then your turn to play again. Counting by fives, write down the numbers from 35 to 100. There were five fish in the lake near the campus. Two more fish came over and joined them. How many fish are now in the lake? So that's bringing elements from chapter one, what numbers make seven, and then some fun information um, about related to the story. And then the answers. When parents are first introduced to these books, especially if they're starting from apples as the first book, it can be tempting to think that it is a watered down version of maths and it cannot be a standalone curriculum. Um, on the surface, it can look a bit light on, but remember that you're covering 10 books in grade one to four and they do progress pretty quickly. Uh, so let me show you something from the intermediate book now, just so you and have a look at the spread of levels. So there's three in the intermediate, and I'll just show you a little bit from liver. Okay, so we'll go to the contents page. Okay, so as you can see here, they've got some fractions, they've got some angles, some money, and then you've got the Pythagorean theorem. So remember that the intermediate series uh, targets kids from grades four to six. Um, so there is some serious maths in here. I don't think I learned Pythagorean theorem till I was in year eight. And that was probably from North Shore and not from school. Um, and then they've got a lot of uh, medical type information here because it's a liver book. Uh, they've got things on hepatologists, the largest organ, the liver, hypercholesterolemia versus hypocholesterolemia. And again, it's an American book, so we spell it differently. We spell it with an A-E. Um, and then later on in the story, his friend gets in a car accident. So then it talks about extradural hemorrhaging. So we might go to that chapter now. Uh, so the story is his friend gets into a car accident. One of the paramedics comes to comfort Fred. He said, your mum just bumped her head. She'll be okay. He didn't want to scare this little boy by mentioning that she should probably need x-rays to find out if any bones were broken. The paramedic figured that Fred was about three years old and might not understand what x-rays are. Fred said, I think it would be too early to rule out an extradural hemorrhage. That condition will occur, as you know, in about 2% of those admitted to a hospital as a result of a blow to the head. The paramedic couldn't believe what he was hearing. Three-year-olds don't use that language. Or the possibility, Fred continued, of a subdural of a subarachnoid hemorrhage also exists. And then it's got some fun information here explaining what a hemorrhage is and what it means uh, to have a subdural, subarachnoid, or an extradural hemorrhage. Then we get to the questions. You're a helmet when you ride a bicycle. Most bicycle riders cannot name the three kinds of hemorrhages that wearing a helmet can prevent. You can name them. If you had to draw a hundred stars, you could make them into a rectangle that was five rows by 20 columns. Could those 100 stars be also be arranged into a square? 2% means two out of a hundred. 
illustrate this by drawing 100 circles and colouring in two of them. And then find 6 sevenths of 413. So again, they've got the answers here for the student. So one of the complaints from users of this book series is the lack of practice and procedural explanations. As you can see, there's only one book per level and in each chapter, there's only a handful of questions before you move on. The authors want to make maths only as serious and as complicated as it needs to be. Their belief is that traditional drill and kill where students get worksheet upon worksheet is what kills a student's passion for learning. One pitfall of this approach is that if you have a struggling student or a struggling parent, you don't have any extra resource to draw on. There's no separate student workbook or parent manual. So if you get stuck, you might need to bring in supplementary materials to fill in the gaps. Uh, so this is particularly for elementary and in intermediate because in the high level books, like I said before, you can uh, buy a separate practice book. So let me show you some of the fractions book now. So this is for middle school levels. And this is the first book in the five book series for middle schoolers. And as I said, once you get to this section, this age level, you can buy an extra practice book if there's not enough in the book for you. So we'll go to the contents. Um, so as you can see here, the chapters are no longer named after what's happening in the storyline. So it gets a little bit more serious at this age level. Uh, so you're looking at cardinal and ordinal numbers, diameter and radius, budgeting, doubling fractions, comparing fractions, reducing fractions. You've got subtracting fractions with same denominators. Find the common denominator, Roman numerals, adding fractions, least common multiple, improper fractions, lines of symmetry, division by zero, subtracting fractions, circumference, multiplying mixed numbers, commutative law, adding mixed numbers. So this is all fractions. So this is a hardcore fraction book. By the end of this, you'll definitely know fractions. In this uh, age group also, there's a bridge at the end of each unit. A bridge is kind of like an end of unit test uh, where you have to get a certain number of questions correct um, to move on to the next chapter. So I'll just show you the final bridge so you get an idea of what the student um, is supposed to have learnt by the end of this book. So there's five bridges here, or five tests, and the goal is to get 13 or more right to finish this book. And in each one, there's 15 questions. So they're aiming for a mastery level here. Um, it's not sufficient just to get half of them correct and get a 50% pass. So what is the area of a sheet of paper that measures this many inches by this many inches? You've got multiplying fractions, is it possible to draw a five-sided figure with, a three, with three right angles? You've got dividing by fractions. If seven bolts weigh four ounces, how much would 11 bolts weigh? Change this mixed number into an improper fraction. Change a diameter of a circle into its circumference. Uh, the sum of six hundredths and four hundredths. Express your answer as a fraction that is reduced as much as possible. Uh, which is smaller, so comparing fractions with a different denominator. Find the lowest common multiple of 2 and 40. One fifth of an hour is how many minutes? What is the square of this? How many lines of symmetry does this arrow have? Subtract this fraction from this fraction. If little lamb jumps seven times each minute, how many times does she jump in an hour? Uh, so as you can see, it's quite serious fractions here. This is definitely not a watered down uh, version of maths. Okay, so in summary, this is Life of Fred, story-based maths curriculum. What do I like about this series? Kids love the nonsensical random nature of the storyline. It's engaging, it's practical, and they remember the maths. I get a bit uncomfortable with some of the storyline sometimes. There's a part in the liver book, which is all about getting injured, uh, where Fred sits on top of a car to go on a camp, then he falls off the car, and then he takes his clothes off to count his bruises and finds that three quarters of his body is covered in bruises. And then that's how the student is introduced to fractions and percentages. I'm sitting there thinking, poor Fred, why does he have no parents? Who let him sit on top of the car? But kids love this kind of stuff. 
They find it so funny and most importantly, they remember the maths. Uh, so reservations, like I said before, I think a child or a parent who struggles with maths might have a hard time with this curriculum. There are very few explicit teaching moments and there's minimal practice and review in the younger levels. So if you fall into this struggling category, you might need to bring in supplementary materials if you want to use Life of Fred. Should you get Life of Fred? Well, I guess only you can decide that. Every family is unique, but I do believe this is a very fun way to learn maths and it fills in a gap in the spectrum of curriculum available out there. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching.